button. So hello, everybody. Um, really good to see so many of you here tonight for um, what is going to prove to be, I know, a very interesting um, session with Roy. Roy Ballam is here to um, disseminate, as it were, talk to you about what himself and myself have been up to over the last six months, which is um, a research project um, looking at the future of our subject, textiles in the curriculum. So with no more ado, I'm going to hand you over to Roy. Hello, Roy. Thanks, Dawn, and good evening, everybody. Thanks ever so much for joining us. I appreciate it. it's probably been a very hectic day, um, and but it's very good for you to come here. I'm just going to put my presentation on. Before I do, I just need to apologise in advance if I'm looking away from the camera because uh, my camera on my computer is not working, so I'm using an external one. So apologies for that in advance. So let me just get my presentation up. I'm going to share that with you. Um, and here we go. Um, so um, while I'm doing this, I won't be able to see all of you. So if there are any questions or anything, and hopefully Dawn will be monitoring you all, but there's an opportunity at the end to have some reflections, have some questions, or just have a, a quick general discussion. Of course, if you've got any questions, I can also answer them afterwards via email. That's not a problem too. But tonight, what we're focusing on is a project which started, as Dawn said, about six months ago. Um, and it was really to try and work out what's going on and what the curriculum in the future might look like. Um, so let me just go through some of this. So thanks a lot. Curriculum, um, you know where that is in England in key stages one to three. And then we've got GCSE key stage four. It's been here for a number of years. But what we know at the moment is that key players have already started to think about what the curriculum might be in the future. Um, with an election coming possibly quite soon um, and potential change of government, people are starting to think, what will a future curriculum look like and what might it contain? And this is the, where it's important that textiles has its voice. Because as you can see from the top paragraph, we can get an idea from chatting to people that people believe there's less textiles being taught, that his status is not as good, is diminishing over time, um, and that we've got non-specialists teaching the subject, and that really we need to make sure its relevance is there and it's highlighted. So the Textile Skills Centre wanted to make sure that in this discussion, with these um, expert groups and with government, textiles wasn't forgotten. And I think all credit to them, I think that's an, a very, very good thing um, to do. So the research wanted to really, first of all, obtain a baseline of what is happening now. And that will be around timetabling, what pupils are actually taught, what pupils think about their lessons as well. Um, and, and that's all to try and help to address where textiles might be in a future curriculum, what that content might be, and also how it's taught as well. So what we wanted to do is get a bit of a consensus view from teachers, pupils, and other stakeholders about this area. And all this work was funded uh, very generously by the All Saints Educational Trust. And I should mention as well that I was involved in something very similar to this about six, eight months ago um, around food education and going forward in the curriculum in a possible review too. So the review, um, we undertook three pieces of work. The first one was to bring together two expert groups, one comprising people from industry and higher education. So we've got that sort of career progression route and also looking at um, progression in learning going through, and then also from teachers, so the community as well. We also then undertook some research and survey work. So originally we were just going to do it with teachers, secondary school teachers, and we had nearly 300 take part. And if you were one of those people, thank you very much for your time. We also asked those teachers to see whether their pupils could get involved. And we had 177 involved, so that was good. Obviously though, with this type of survey, as it's, an, as it's sort of a, an open survey, those pupils might have been those ones that are quite 
positive about textiles. Um, so there could be a little bit of bias creeping in uh, in there. But generally what we found as well is that we had a good range of ages um, coming into the pupils here. And as you might well think that we had more key stage three pupils, slightly less key stage four, and then a few um, A-level students taking part. And lastly, um, through the work with the expert groups, they suggested that we should also talk to primary school teachers. That wasn't our original intention. And we only had a very small um, sample size take part. And when you see some of the results, these are probably schools that are teaching textiles quite well. Um, and I think what we might need to look at in the future is are doing a bit more, you know, casting the net a bit wider to find out what many, many more primary schools are doing or are not doing um, and what their reasons might be for each case. And lastly, um, particularly Dawn had a look at engaging different stakeholders by hosting a range of meetings to really find out from them what they believe about textiles education from their perspective. And that might be from industry or it might be from higher education. So we did quite a lot of work pulling this together. So the first part is really thinking about how is textiles taught now? So this is our baseline as we went through. Um, no surprise in primary school, those textiles, uh, those teachers that teach textiles said it's mainly through d &T, and they also supplement that in art and design as well. In primary schools, children have five hours of textiles education a year. So 30 hours, as you can see from the main headline of textiles education over six years. And having talked to other people, we think this might be more near the high end in primary school. So that's something to consider. 45% of those schools, the pupils actually had eight to 11 hours per year, which again, I think is probably quite high. Um, if you think about the way that textiles is used in primary schools. Uh, a majority of the teachers there said that they thought they had the know-how. And when you analyze those results, it was mainly because some of them actually had a textiles degree. So hence a little bit of bias, but also they enjoyed sewing and knitting and so forth as a hobby. So they had a personal interest and therefore they found it easier to teach primary school children different types of textiles, which kind of makes sense. Um, they did also acknowledge that there were challenges in teaching textiles. So it wasn't all plain sailing. And this will resonate with you if you're from a secondary school, a lack of time, lack of support and so forth. And they really did think as well, they needed some support and help understanding progression. Now we talk a lot about progression in key stage three and four or transition from key stage two to three, but they were struggling a little bit on the differences and the journey from key stage one through to two, so five to 11 years. So that's something that we might need to have a look at and address. But also there was some frustration um, of actually having to be a subject expert for everything, including textiles. So you can imagine there's a lot on their plate essentially. There were barriers um, to them, as I mentioned, mainly to do with money, time, materials, and equipment. And I'm sure that would be true in secondary schools too. And the main thing around textiles in primary is there was an end product, an end kind of garment, or as you can see here, it might have been a puppet or a decoration that they, that they made. And where possible, they tried to use different stories and cultural themes and parts of history as cross-curricular links to, to bring textiles to life. In secondary schools, um, slightly different picture, um, whereas the, they had more time. So on average, around 53 hours over a key stage three. Um, and that was taught via a rotation timetable, which is quite traditional, as you can imagine. So within d &T, it's taught, you know, maybe once, twice a week for half a term, a term or so forth, and less frequently, as one lesson a week over the entire year. So that was not the norm. Rotation was the norm. 47% um, had about 11 to 12, um, 11 to 20 hours per year. So about 60 hours. 
which again is not huge when you think about how many school days there are in a year and how many hours there are um, in each day. And interestingly, I would have thought this myself, but some pupils did not have any textiles education at all in year nine. And this is still into the uh, issues around starting a GCSE earlier, which I know you shouldn't be doing, but some schools still look at different ways around that and giving people taster years and, and so forth. So that is an issue which may then have an issue so for someone from key stage three, clearly to key stage four, and then to A level going yeah, through. Sorry, Dawn, sorry. No, okay. Um, the other in issue um, as well is that there was a, a bit of a balance about whether they thought they had enough time to teach textiles effectively. So 46% said yes, 40% saying no. Uh, the rotation, as again, was the key one. And the emphasis in secondary was very much around sewing skills, making construction and designing overall. What was quite interesting when we talked to pupils is that the headline for this is that pupils who we surveyed liked their textiles lessons and wanted to do more. And I think that's a really encouraging sign um, for young people about their lessons. So they rated their education experience very highly and they cited that it was fun and enjoyable. They learned a lot. They liked their teacher. Yes, I know that's uh, quite interesting. And they actually liked the mixture of theory and practical together. We asked all the pupils um, to give us five words that described their textiles experience now. And the top ones, and you can see the word cloud here, were interesting, fun, educational, creative, and useful. And I think they're really quite powerful words. Imagine if you were into branding, that would be something really interesting to, to focus on. And not a majority, but a minority of pupils did say though, that the, while they enjoyed the lessons, they could be a little bit more challenging and that they wanted some changes with the content uh, even some describing that the layout of the room wasn't to their liking. So you can't please all the people all the time, as, as we well know. The top three areas that they felt that they were learning was designing, sewing, and how to use a sewing machine. So they were the key three things that kept on being repeated by these 177 pupils. Um, and in the future, they would like to be taught more about making clothing items, particularly, uh, focusing more on practical skills and understanding areas of fashion. Some pupils, but not all, just a few, also wanted a little bit of textile history. So I think that was interesting about having a bit of context as well, which I thought that was good. Um, you can see here as well, we, did, we also asked them whether they used any of their textiles, um, knowledge and know-how outside school. And 60% said, you know, in, in a variable degree that they actually did um, and they used it for practical tasks. Or for example, if they were purchasing items, they might look at issues around, for example, sustainability. So it was good to see that what they were learning, they were applying outside the classroom too. One big thing that we did find at GCSE level, and I'm sure some of you here tonight uh, will resonate with this, that there's already a change happening at GCSE. So this is the status now. So we can see here that, you know, about two thirds of our schools, just over two thirds, said that they offered um, GCSE in a textile format. Um, that was either through art and design uh, or D&T or a, some mixture of both. Okay. Now of those that offered the GCSE, a third quite recently have switched from D&T to art. And when we dug a little bit deeper into their responses, what they were saying is that they've moved because they, they believe it's more relevant, textiles are more relevant in art and design because there's, there's a lack of textile content in d and from their perspective. People have, people have more interest and it was more accessible. Teachers felt they had the expertise to teach the art and design specification. They felt it led to creativity, and there was a general dissatisfaction with the DNT specification, 
as one of the key reasons for change. Um, just nearly about 50% offered some post-16 courses, mostly A-level, um, and those that didn't offer it was either because there was very low numbers of people, pupils interested, or they had no sixth form. Um, so it was pretty, pretty clear cut. So that's where we are now. So we know that there's not a lot happening in primary. Um, there's variable amounts happening in secondary. Pupils like what they're being taught, um, which is very, very encouraging. And there's a change happening already at GCSE where people are kind of voting with their feet, essentially, around the content of textiles education. So what did those people, people then say to us about the future? Um, so when we look at key stages one to three, both primary and secondary school teachers basically indicated they still wanted to keep textiles within d &T for lots of different reasons. Um, they would cite because it's a, a practical home. Um, there's a sort of uh, safety in numbers. So would you be a, a separate textile subject on the curriculum? Maybe, maybe not. But where would that, where would that leave you? Um, they also thought that d and led to the creativity, the world of work, looking at solving problems and sustainability. Um, although some of those, particularly at primary level, said that it needed to be taught by specialists, particularly. At secondary, they wanted it to, to kept in d and mainly because of the design process, the heritage and industrial importance, but also about the skills, the curriculum, the, the way in which their curriculum is currently structured to, that they're important things. So, so being pragmatic about where would you put it and, and how would it function? But also again, as primary, about creativity and sustainability too. Those that wanted it removed were saying, well, quite honestly, you know, there, there's not any alignment with textiles in DNT. There's not much emphasis. Um, the preference uh, is for them would be much more art and creative focus. And they just felt that it needed to be its own subject. Um, and those teachers that wanted it removed from d and a majority also said that if it was removed, the time currently within d and for textiles should be removed from d and So mainly for d and but with a number of caveats there particularly around making sure there's more subject content, which is around textiles in the curriculum. And if you look at key stages one to three, like Dawn and I did the other day, and you look through the programs of study, there's hardly any reference to, to textiles where there's three or four sentences for food. So maybe that's something to think about for the future. What teachers also told us though, is that there's a clear desire to update that subject content, the way in which it's delivered, the timetabling, and also looking at this a clear progression running from primary right the way through to post 16, higher education, and then careers. So primary, they want more curriculum time, um, they also wanted to make sure there was an emphasis on practical skills, um, using a range of different types of techniques, but also making sure that there was a clear purpose to textiles and that sustainability was taught. And you, you've probably already heard that I've said sustainability a lot tonight, and that was a key thing that kept on being mentioned all the, all the time of going through. There was also this issue with progression, as I mentioned, uh, around key stage one through to two, let alone transition to key stage three. Uh, secondary, as I've already stated, majority of the teachers wanted to make sure that there was textiles content. So what would be the subject content at key stage three for textiles? Now, lots of people have schemes of work and so forth, but what lays behind that? What is the fundamental building blocks for textiles? That's where we're, we're, they, they were saying that we, we need to look. And that again included sustainability, technology and innovation, careers, skills, fashion and design and so forth going forward. So when we look at this again, from a timetabling perspective, there was a, there was a shift. 
So where we've got a current look at textiles in a, in a rotation, there was a move to have it more on sort of a weekly or bi-weekly. So getting removed from that rotation. And I know sometimes the rotation can have its issues, but it does solve a quite a number of problems. But this is where we've got, got to. There was also a, an increase in the time spent. So, you know, from 53 on average to 111, so it's double the amount of time should be given to textiles. And also there needs to be a better articulation on what we mean by textiles education and how that progresses through the year groups running through. With the content as well, there was a, a big significant increase to teaching more on sustainability, textiles in real use. And what I mean by that is a more uh, broader understanding of everyday uses of textiles, not just fashion, not just clothes, but when you sit on the bus, the, the seats are, are made of it. You think about space travel, car design and inside, inside interiors. I could go on and on and on but it's about that everyday use. So making sure we bring that into the curriculum. And also I would say kind of from my food point of view, a bit of back to basics, actually looking at fibers and fabrics. I'm sure many of you here do, do cover this, but this is more about what we should make sure is in a curriculum, the subject content. And we also wanted to make sure that there's a big change and a focus on creativity and innovation. You can see from this chart here, the shift from current to future, there's a quite a significant emphasis change as you go through from what's taught now to what people would like to be taught in the future or teach rather in the future. So we also asked pupils about what they would like um, to change in the future. Um, and although some of them said their teacher, which is always the joke, but what they really wanted uh, to keep the same was their teacher. They wanted practical lessons, they wanted similar sort of subject content and they liked the classroom environment overall, although some of them did say it could be changed. What they did want though is more challenge. They wanted more practical work, personalized learning, making the content relevant to them, improve resources and that goes back to school budgets and allocations, um, but also again, having more of a textiles focus, um, which could be linked to timetabling and rotation and so forth. Our expert groups are also saying that there needs to be a focus on the significance of textiles beyond fashion, as I also mentioned. So, and this would lead really nicely to that progression to A-level and then to higher education as well. So a lot of what we've been looking at focused on making um, something to wear well, what they were saying is that is that everyday use and looking towards different types of fabrics for the future as well uh, and different uses of textiles in the future um, and that might reflect things around climate change and sustainability again another key thing for the future is that people told us that they want to make textiles at GCSE more relevant uh, not just to them, but as a spec in its own right. So there was a call for a revision of the DNT at GCSE, ensuring that there was more textile focus within that. And a majority of teachers also did suggest that they would really like a separate GCSE for textiles at this level. And this would allow for more focus and a relevant curriculum experience and possibly, uh, I would suggest a better progression from GCSE through to A-level, which is much more tightly um, prescribed and defined going through there. But this discussion needs to take place because we also talked about the, uh, for example, changes in NEAs, for example, again, to make them much more clear about the role and purpose of textiles. They also wanted to make sure that there was this, um, this change going forward happening. Um, there is a big contentment with art and design. There's no problem with that, but that contentment for that GCSE was not shared with DMT. Pupils also wanted to make sure that the GCSE content was more relevant to textiles with a greater focus. 
And again, what's interesting, we asked pupils about their five top words for the future of textiles. And it was interesting, creative, exciting, useful, and good. You can't go wrong with good, can you? So again, I think that was a very positive and impactful thing. Another theme that kept on coming through was we need to really promote and shout about textiles. We need to really value its, its contribution to, to the curriculum and to young people. And we need to promote that as well. So it was about the, the nature, the content, and the delivery of textiles education. We need to really define that in some sort of guide or framework. And we need to show that it's more just than sewing and fashion, like food is more than just cooking, for example. And if we had exemplification at primary and secondary to show what that looks like, that would support people, for example, trainees, early career teachers, non-specialists in, in helping to actually really raise the profile and the content of textiles education. We'd also want to make sure that it was more engaging to pupils and align it to those modern trends that they picked up on, particularly around sustainability. We also found that they wanted more recognition of textiles in the school curriculum. And a number of teachers talked about making sure it was valued by the SLT and governors particularly uh, as a crucial, crucial subject. And there was also some discussion as well to make sure textiles was included in Progress 8 or EBAC going forward to demonstrate its value, um, especially when you're thinking about selling the subject for choices at GCSE and A-level. And there was a clear desire to promote it, uh, the textiles and to raise its, its profile, its status and its value. Um, and what they also talked about is showing pe people, and I mean people in its general sense, as in teachers, SLT, parents, pupils, and so forth, about the career opportunities and pathways, which are, which are huge um, in the textiles industry. So that's kind of all the work that we did, and it doesn't seem a lot for six months, but it, it was a bit of a labor of love. So we know the things in the future people want to change. So what might those changes look like um, and what recommendations could we put forward? So we had a few. So one of the first ones is that we really wanted to conduct a deeper dive into primary textiles. Having some recommendations based on 30 odd schools is not enough. Um, and also, as I mentioned, there could be some bias within that. So we really wanted to get some information on what's really happening on the status quo at key stage one and two in primary schools and to make sure there's a broader cross section of schools in order for us to understand what can be done realistically, pragmatically, but also to stretch people and to make sure primary pupils have a good textiles experience. So that's the first one. The second one is that we, we feel that we need to further consult secondary school teachers on the content of textiles. So here, what we really want to do is to have that sort of that core content, that core outline, that subject content for textiles. So it's shared across the community. So we know the rationale for it. We know what, what it is and what we do and how we assess it. And that's, that's in a documented for everyone to have. And that may be part of a future curriculum, but actually if it was produced, it's a kind of go-to place for people to check, to ask questions, to seek advice going forward, um, which I, we think is be, be quite important. The third one was about having a, a clear understanding of textiles education. And this is across everything. This is kind of quite a lofty one, but to understand its value, its contribution um, to the curriculum, to young people, to careers. And I think this is something that probably we could get behind and help to create this, particularly if we look back at number two, about that, that content and teaching approaches and about the deep dive in primary. If we combine those two things together, 
into recommendation three, I think that will put us in a really strong position. And all the research that we've done is really kind of shouting us to say, we really need to define it. We need to say what it is, what we're doing, and we need to have that published and government needs to take notice of that. Number four is that we really need to review and discuss these GCSE options. We need to acknowledge this teacher and pupil feedback, but we also we need to think about the, the practical challenges that lay ahead. So you can't just kind of suddenly magic up a, a new GCSE. We need to think about resources and training needs, uh, the time for um, awarding organizations to even consider, let alone uh, write a course and put these on. So there's a lot going on here, but I think what we can do as in the um, the Textile Skill Centre is to start to have those conversations with awarding organisations, showing them the work that we've done and to get them to understand what teachers feel about what's currently happening. And of course, you might have your own comments and it'd be great to include those too. Number five is to make sure we've got that professional development to ensure that subject knowledge, and by knowledge I mean not just what you know, but also those practical skills too. So we need to make sure that that CPD is offered to primary and secondary school teachers, and it helps to embrace any of that change. So any of that subject content that we've talked about too. So we really wanna make sure that they have those skills and those technical know-how to make sure pupils receive the very best textiles experience. And our last recommendation is to really promote textiles education. So if we've been through all this and we've defined it and we've said what it is, its contribution, how lovely it is, um, maybe help to review GCSE, is then say, right, let's have some sort of campaign to really promote and highlight the benefit and value of textiles education in school. Ooh. So our next steps, it's published. So if you haven't already read it, it's a riveting read, it, particularly if you can't sleep. Um, so have a look. We've got the web link on here as well as a QR code. Um, if you can help us spread the word, that will be fantastic. Um, it'd be great to know a bit more about who you think the Textile Skill Centre to talk to, to further this discussion around the future of textiles uh, in the curriculum. Just because we've got this report, it doesn't mean that we can't keep on learning gathering advice and talking to people. And it'd be great to find out a bit about what you think. So I'm gonna say thank you very much. And I'm gonna hand over to Dawn for any last comments or discussion or reflections. So thank you. Thank you so much, Roy. Um, it, has anybody got, that, I mean, that was, it's really, I've been doing this for six months with Roy. So I'm sort of like, you know, I've got my head in it, and um, I've had we've had we've had our questions, and we've answered our questions. And we've got other people to talk to us about questions. Has anybody here got any questions that they would like to throw up? Must be Sam. Has anybody put anything in the chat? So let's have a look at the they chat. Always like some silence. It's excellent. <laughs> what have we got in the chat? In the in the chat. Um, so, let's just have a quick look. Uh, yeah. Is there not? So, um, Julia Roebuck is asking: Is that because DNT offers covers other materials too? Is there not a specific DNT textiles GCSC anymore? No, there isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Easy one to answer. Um, also, Julie's asking, on the theme of sustainability, referencing a broader use of textiles beyond fashion, is the fabric of life and careers information a case study went on to the Woven website last week of our Textiles Future event in Huddersfield in 2023. There's a short film and a written case study too. Thank you very much, Julie, Julia. Um, there's a link there if anybody's interested in that. Um, I don't know who the Zoom user is, but um, asking the question, a separate GCSC would be good with more relevant NEA projects for textiles. Um, Claire is asking, can we try some textiles big hitters like Esme Young and Patrick Grant? That's a good, very good idea. I have actually tried to um, approach both of them before now um, on other things and it's not come off. They've not, the, the, you get stuck at the agent. 
um, their agents, um, but we'll, we will keep trying. Um, or speak to college and universities about students' work they see coming through. So we, uh, myself and Nikki, have actually been into um, both Huddersfield and to um, De Montfort, and we have been, uh, as part of the um, expert groups and the interviews that we did, um, we spoke to Nottingham Trent, we spoke to Roehampton, we spoke to um, Huddersfield, and we spoke to De Montfort. So we are talking with um, these uh, universities and hoping to maybe partner with a couple of them in in the future on future projects um, because yes they are just starting to realize what's happening in schools and like we've been shouting about for a while and they're just starting to realize it and um, and then and feeling it in terms of the quality of skills that students are coming through with or the lack of quality of skills or the lack of skills um, so yeah, absolutely. This 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 is an, an important um, issue for them as well as for us in schools. Um, thank you, Zoom user. That was great. Just reflects how loads of us feel. Yeah, the dreaded call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Margaret, uh, what is recruitment like for textile teachers? Actually, I, I think that's a really good one. Thank you, and um, it's something that we'll we can investigate um, as a as an add on to this because I know. Um, the, there's an issue with, with food teachers uh, and a colleague of mine had a look at the Times Ed last week and there was 170 uh, jobs available. So um, I think there's definitely a career available. Um, it's just that the recruitment is an issue. But that's a really good point. Thank you. Yeah, Nikki's also flagged up that the, the fact that the art textiles is the same discount code as art. I don't know if you want to say a bit more about that, Nikki. Yeah, I, I approach, obviously, a lot of you know me, I approach things from an art textiles as opposed to D&T, although I have taught both, but I taught the old D&T spec, which I did love, by the way. Um, but um, I, from from my perspective, having taught a lot of art textiles, I feel that we would also gain a huge amount more textile um, students if art did not have, um, textiles did not have the same discount code as art, because schools will not teach both because um, they're only going to get points for either one or the other. Um, and originally, when all these subjects were joined together, P was joined with food and dance and drama, they ended up taking all of them away from each other and making them separate subjects, except art textiles. Art textiles is still grouped with, tech with art, and I do believe um, that they are very separate subjects, and that's the problem that with art textiles, basically. Um, those teaching art textiles will know this when they swap over from d &T to art textiles a lot of the time they're not able to do it because the headmaster won't let them the students still get the points to GCSEs but the school doesn't thank you for that um, Janine Smith is saying we need to get industry involved um, I used to work in the industry and there is a sh skill shortage yeah absolutely there is um, and uh, we've tried to get industry involved. It's not for want of, of, of trying. We have tried, but they're very reluctant to get involved. I think they're just far too busy. Um, but we are going to pursue them in the future um, through the universities, I think, because the universities have got strong connections with um, uh, through their courses, through their um uh, in, in terms of internships and whatever, and um, and doing projects with you know, with a variety of different um, companies such as Sanderson's, Prince, and Next, and ASOS or whatever. So we are going to hopefully work with them on trying to get industry more involved in the school and uh, the school bit, the, the pre HE bit, uh, and see if we can. Um, uh, yeah, see see what progress we can make with that. We're going to try and work with them and do some links um, on um, some some projects that we're we're writing at the moment. Um, so, Miss Stafford, <laughs> students pick to do D and T in my school as they have enjoyed the subject at KS three, then get switched off having to cover all the material areas. This leads to less numbers at A level. Yeah, I think this is a huge huge issue. Um, they're getting put off. Um, I think you know that. that as, as Roy mentioned earlier, the, the students are actually getting put off doing um, because there's not enough textiles within the DT um, spec specs at the moment. And um, if they're not getting that exciting, engaging um, 
am out, uh, am out in the uh, in the subject at the t uh, D and T subject, then they're not going to take it on to A level. They get you know they just get fed up with it. Um, anything else? Campaign with celebrity endorsement is a good idea for them to talk about their textiles and fashion education. Tan Francis did a lovely film about Doncaster College. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes, I have seen that. I have seen that. Yes. Um, so, yes, there's um, definitely in terms of the last recommendation about promoting the subject. Uh, yeah, some sort of campaign. We need to be campaigning somehow and get um, ce celebs, try and find some celebs who are who will get involved with this. Um, what do manufacturers, brands, retailers, universities, and apprentices want students at 16 plus and 18 plus want to see from students? Um, this was what these were the questions that we asked, and um a lot of quite a lot of that information came through um in the research. Don't know if you can remember any of it, Roy, but there was um we did ask not so much manufacturers, but we did ask um the universities and the and apprenticeships what what students at 16 plus and 18 plus want to see from what they wanted to see from students. Um, one of the one of the key things was it was more of a understanding of some of the technical aspects of textiles, not just fashion. I think that was one of the key things that kept on coming through. Yeah. Um, I think that that was that was uh, I mean the, the core skills and that were all were all fine, but it was just more about having a, a wider understanding of textiles, um, and no disrespect to art and design stuff, but some courses um, obviously felt that that, they, that was less useful for them on their course. But of course, if you're doing more of an art textiles, a uh, higher degree anyway, then that would be absolutely fine. Um, but there's there's a lot of options out there. So I, I suppose it's trying to make sure that pupils have options in, in school in order to help with their interests and also any career progression that they might want or further study. So Lindsay, you're asking, I'm confused, AQA offers GCSE textiles. Not as far as I know. <laughs> you can do GCSE D and T through the textile using a textiles as the route, or you can do GCSE art and design textiles. But there isn't a GCSE standalone GCSE textiles course anywhere. Um, so uh, Anthea, I used to deliver D and T textiles. Will inspect change. I switched to art, art textiles. I contacted my tutor for my textiles degree. Who said students who have done art textiles at school had a much richer portfolio than if they had done D and T. Yeah, that's very true. And I think it depends on which courses that those um, students uh, go go on to do. What which textiles degree they go on to do. Um, but quite often, those tutors are looking for, um, you know creative uh the creativity and the ability to to um think think outside the box etc and with art textiles you tend to do that with whereas currently with the current dnt um of course you don't that that's not sort of part of the requirement i could be wrong because i don't i've not taught it um in industry i used cad every day i don't think you mentioned it in the list yet uh CAD is used every day and CAD is used in school. I don't know what, what the list, which list was that? I'm trying to think which list was that. It, it wasn't something that people frequently mentioned. Um, otherwise it would have ranked up, it would have come up. Um, obviously we've got more of the raw data which we can go through. And in the report, I've just produced a summary for tonight. But in the back of the report is, is more of the detail. Uh, I mean, I don't think that people are not doing it. It just wasn't highly mentioned when, when they asked them to recall what they did. So Claire, is there also saying um, what the rate of textile teachers thinking of leaving? I'm thinking of going, oh, please don't, we need you. <laughs> I don't know, actually. That's maybe a bit of research that we will have to do uh, to see what the rate of D&T and textiles teachers uh, who are leaving. Um, yeah. Uh, Jenna Mann, a lot, a lot, I, oh yes, I left school because they cut textiles and made my room a computer room. It isn't valued. It, if it isn't valued more, teachers will leave. Absolutely. Um, Jenna, I went to a recycling company a few weeks ago and they said we need more technical textiles, less art, making things look nice, more on how clothing can be disassembled for recycling. Well, there's, you know, that's another example of jobs in the industry. Of course, you still need um 
the creative side, but yeah, you, you also need all the technical and the scientific side as well. Um, so there needs to be more curriculum, mixture of both. DT experience used to be less relevant when applying to university. I assume so it's because it is mostly art textile graduates applying. DT, I feel, gives a much better grounding for moving into industry than art textiles. Yeah, I think it. I think that is true in some respects, but it, uh, it, it, it only if the if the teacher who's teaching the DNT textiles route um, has uh, is engaging and has all that that has her own experience of textiles and understands how to deliver textiles through DNT. Um, I think it can be um, much better give give a student much better grounding than art textiles. Art textiles is very much for uh, a more creative much more creative subject. Um, yeah, Helen agreeing with Nikki's comment. Um, industry could get more involved with offering work placements, virtual placements, com competition briefs, challenges related to real world design programs. I think there is a lot of that goes on already, but I agree with you, Julia, there should be more of that. And maybe that is something again that we could be doing. Doing fashion shows in schools helps raise numbers. That's an interesting one. I think Nikki used to run fashion shows, didn't you? I did. It promoted a lot. I did fashion, sh a very simple fashion show at the end of the year, but we also did them in assembly and things like that at the beginning of the year to incite people into clubs and things like that. I do think, I do agree with just doing a comment, Dawn. I do agree with what you said about um, universities. I think there's a, personally, I think there's a place for D&T textiles and art textiles. Um, but I think you know, depends what course you're going on to as to what they're doing. That makes a huge difference. There are a lot of courses out there when we visited Leicester um, de Montfort. And there's a lot of courses that, that D&T would be a beautiful specialism for. And there's a lot of courses where art textiles would be a specialism for. So, um, But I think I used to teach art textiles with a lot of fibres and fabrics and all and sustainability. So I suppose it depends how you teach it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Claire, my fashion and textiles A-level students tell me it's not classed as an academic A-level by some universities, so they won't count it. So frustrating, it's so hard to get top grades. I think there is a misunderstanding of the subject, uh, of the qualification, full stop. I think when even when we went to Leicester, they weren't really that impressed or, or even looking for D&T, fashion and textiles A-level. That wasn't a, a, a requirement when you when you applied for a, you know fashion or textiles uh, any of their textiles courses it wasn't a wasn't a requirement um so maybe if we could make it more relevant and um and change the perception of the course um through its relevance and the content then maybe we could get them to actually make it as a subject a core subject that they require at you know in order to or or you know i don't know i'm just thinking off the top of my head there um a lot of work if they did art and art textile so that's why my school won't allow them to do both i don't don't sort of agree with that do you think that's right i don't know it is a lot of work but they are a lot of work but i it depends i think it depends um i think sometimes they the the problem is that they if they're doing the same exam board um, at the exam, they have the same NEA, which is sometimes a bit of a problem. But um, we let we let students in our school do both. Um, so I'm aware of time. Um, we've missed Stafford again. <laughs> so we've be just been fortunate enough to work with an industry expert on the sustainability project with her year 10, but there are not enough to go around. She's very keen to see textiles in action and keen to see it grow in school. So just a, a comment on that. Roy and I did a really brilliant um, conference last year on um, sustainability in, in, in textiles industry or in textiles. And that course is up online. Um, so have a look at maybe have a look at, at that because there's loads of really brilliant um, presentations that we did with industry from Marks and Spencers to Primark to uh, who else do we get Wayne Hemingway from um, yeah. Hemingway Design We've got a whole bunch of people doing things it was brilliant so there may be something there if you want to have a look at that 
Um, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Sustainability in text. I can't remember what it's called. What was it called, Roy? <laughs> <laughs> Very long ago, about nine months ago. It was in June last year. It was a long time ago. It was fantastic. Uh, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Joe said I ran a 12 week sustainability project at Holmforth High 2020 it was received really well received and definitely worth definitely more needed absolutely um, there's, there's been several we've done several things on, on sustainability and eco schools Rachel AD did um, which is actually a free resource on the website on um, sustainability as well so have a look at that circular design in Texas key key skill needed in industry absolutely it just left industry and it's a huge part of 2030 aims for industry in general i found hardly any graduates i employed really knew or understand this this apart from lip service yeah i think um definitely as as roy mentioned earlier we he seemed to mention sustainability in every every other sentence so it's definitely going to be um it's an important one but people don't teachers don't seem to be getting that yet I think it's maybe got to come from the top down. I don't know. Um, then it could come from you guys. And you yeah. could make your school eco-sustainable by becoming an eco-school and making textiles the lead in your school for sustainability. Yeah. There you go. Um, Dawn, um, just one, one question I've got for everybody is, was there anything tonight that you heard that, like recommendation-wise, that you disagree with? Or are you, I mean, generally feel quite positive or happy, um, I'm going to blame Dawn, uh, no, are you generally happy of some of the work that she might take on board in the future? Are you generally like that or any any negative at all? So, I mean, if you could just put something in the chat box, that would be good. It could be a thumbs up or... Maybe I've done a poll, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. But if just, just that, you know, if there is anything you would disagree with, then that's useful to know as well. Um, somebody who's now teaching NQT because uh, DNT Texas was dropped. Um, a lot of theory that's covered in DNT Texas is out of date. That's an interesting one, isn't it? And you're absolutely right. Uh, subject could be approached more from a fabric engineering angle. Yeah. Uh, really like the structure of DT Texas and the NEA, but the end of course exam is a lottery and is worth 50% of the exam of the GCSE. The exam papers are so unpredictable. Agree with that. Faye, I've recently joined DT Textiles, currently in ECT. Our department has talked lots of the future of DT. Alison Hardy's studies about the future of DT in general. Yeah. Um, Alison Hardy's done some really good work actually on this. And uh, she's written um, research and written a review, which um, DFE have not yet published, and everybody's up in arms about them not published it. Um, vocational textiles courses um, would be good, very much so. There's um, the um, the T awards that are being muted. We talked to UKFT last week. I don't know if you're on the T in chat last week, but Celia Thornley was actually talking about about that. Um, historical lack of understanding around the subject, which is very hard to dis dispel. You, you're right there. Um, most people think it is just a bit of sewing and belittle the skill and technical ability needed. And you say that this really simple task of sewing, like sewing a button on, and people can't do it. <laughs> oh dear. Um, just a bit of darning, and I bet they can't darn. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, okay. So, how easy so is can it? I, can I say something? Yeah, of course. As somebody, as somebody who comes from industry, my experience of people coming in as young designers or young pattern cutters or young anything into industry is the extreme lack of knowledge of fabric itself, where they come from, how they're made, how they're structured, what different fabrics are, how they perform, how they wash, how they shrink, just an absolute fundamental knowledge of textiles and their structure. Um, they don't know the difference between a, a viscose or a cotton or a synthetic they have no idea where polyester comes from, what it's made from. So the understanding of sustainability, if they don't understand that, means that they don't understand something right from the beginning. They don't understand weave structure. They don't understand that actually if you talk about a cotton, it's a fibre, not a fabric. So that's from an industrial point of view. I'm always quite stunned how few 
how little knowledge people actually understand of the base fabric of what starts to be a textile. And that's what needs to be included in a, um, you know, on a, on a, a, a base, the content for teaching textiles. That's what needs to be included. It's got to be there. It is those fundamental basic, um, that basic knowledge that uh, people just leave school without even understanding the difference between a woven or a knitted fabric. And that always drives me mad. When I point at somebody and say, what's your T-shirt made out of? And they haven't a clue. They just go cotton. And how is it made? They just don't know. <laughs> anyway, yes, I agree with you entirely, Julia. Um, how is it, is it to bring back a GCSE when it's been dropped historically? Impossible, I would say. <laughs> but watch this space. Who knows what we can do? Um, yeah, teachers, numbers are getting so low. Teachers having to fight for it, which I guess is um, exactly why you've created this report. Is there a campaign that is active now? There's no campaign as such, there's no campaign. Um, uh, the, yep. as, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. We've got to just find a bit more funding and see if we can actually do something. Um, you know, trying trying to bring textiles. If anybody wants to support us, properly support us in fighting for our subject, please do get in touch. And I mean properly support, not just say yes on a, you know, do a bit of a survey or say, Yes, I agree. Just like, you know, help us do stuff. There are, we've got two minutes and there are hundreds of questions here. Um, so, and there's no way that we can actually um, go through all of this. Um, if anybody wants to shout something up in the last couple of minutes, please, please do um, shout something up. If you've got something that you want to say. I think, um, Dawn, it would be good as well. Um, perhaps I can have a look through the the chat tomorrow, the, the text. Yeah. Because yeah. there's lots of really useful suggestions. Um, not that we can change the report, but we could keep these for any recommendations that start yeah. and yeah, we yeah. can think the two together. I think that would be really useful. So thank, thank you, everybody. I think I think it was great. Really good. Yes. Um, so last last minute, anybody got anything that they want to shout out loud? <laughs> um, now, Dawn, hi. Sorry. Yeah. Hi, Dawn. Um, is it possible to share the presentation that you've just given? I've, I've printed off the report, but yeah. if that presentation was available, we could, uh, I, we could, if you want bits editing, I would love to share that with my um, head of department, even take it into CLT meetings or SLT meetings to talk, talk yeah. about. Um, so what I'll do is I will, um, in the follow-up email that you get tomorrow, I will um, attach, I, I'm not sure if I can attach, it's probably too big. Um, yeah. But what we can do is we can put it into a drop uh, Dropbox um, link, I send you a link with a Dropbox and the recording of this as well. So um, Amazing, yeah. It's a bit long to, to show somebody, but definitely we can um, definitely put this into the, into the Dropbox link as a resource in the follow-up email tomorrow. Amazing. I'm just, just trying to put it in the chat box now. Oh. Hello. Right. So thank you so much, everybody. It's eight o'clock. We've completely run out of time. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now.